Okay, so at the time of recording, yes, I know it is still 2021, but honestly, if you're in the market for a free VPN service, Proton VPN is your best bet, whether it's this year or next year. And I have to tell you that with so many bad VPN services out there, I am delighted to have finally found a good one. So this review is gonna sound like more like a sales pitch than an actual review, but I promise that that's not my intention. However, before we start, a little bit of background. I have been a subscriber to NordVPN for the last three years. I got it on a pretty good deal. I think I paid something in the region of $2.99 a month. But as you can see, my subscription is coming to an end. So of course, I am receiving the obligatory emails offering their latest and greatest deals. And look, I have to say, I haven't had a problem with NordVPN. In fact, it has been an excellent service. And if I had to pay, I probably would continue with them. But the fact is that these days, I don't think you have to pay for a VPN service, especially not if you're a light VPN user like myself. You see, in this day and age, paying for a VPN service is a bit like charging someone to send an SMS. The market has become so competitive and there are so many good alternatives that there comes a tipping point when companies just stop charging for this kind of stuff. They prefer to have you sign up for free in the hope that they can sell you their other premium products. And that is exactly what Proton VPN are doing. So what do you actually get for free? Well, off the bat, they have apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, and more. You get access to 23 servers across America, the Netherlands, and Japan. So it has the US, Europe, and Asia Pacific all covered. If you're like me, I always choose the fastest connection, which will connect you to the least saturated server closest to wherever you're based in the world. You only get the one connection at a time, but if this is a problem for you, you could simply sign up using two separate accounts. Say one for your desktop or laptop and another for your mobile or tablet. You also get what Proton VPN refer to as a medium speed connection. So what does that mean and how bad is medium? Well, let's do a quick test using Netflix speed testing site fast.com. So here is my normal download speed at home without the VPN turned on. And as you can see, I'm getting about 53 megabits per second. Now, if I go into Proton VPN and connect the VPN, let's see what I get. I'm based in Australia, so the closest connection to me is Japan. So now if I refresh the page and let it do its thing, you can see that it takes a little bit of time to settle down but it finishes off by hitting 42 megabits per second. Now, whether you consider this to be good or bad is of course completely subjective. You may even think that my original speed without the VPN turned on is really bad, but to be honest, I am very happy with these speeds. At these speeds, I don't think I would notice the impact of having the VPN turned on, except maybe if I'm streaming Netflix or YouTube at a high resolution. But the fact is that I'm not using a VPN when I'm sat at home watching Netflix or YouTube. I'm using a VPN when I'm out about connected to public or guest Wi-Fi. And let's be honest, coffee shops and hotel Wi-Fi aren't offering these kinds of speeds. So it's probably not the free VPN that's going to be your bottleneck. What I really like about Proton VPN is paradoxically the things that you don't get. For a start, unlike other free VPN providers, you won't get any data caps. You can run this VPN all day, every day without any limits. You also won't see any nasty malware and the only ads that you're gonna see are from Proton VPN themselves, which I think is fair enough for a free service. They're also not gonna profit by selling your information to third parties. And that's because ProtonVPN is a product from the same company that provide Proton Mail. These guys are based in Switzerland, which as a country does two things really well. They protect your money and they protect your privacy. ProtonVPN has a strict no log policy and their code is completely open source so it is always being checked and patched by the excellent geeks on github in fact proton vpn was the first vpn provider to go completely open source and they're happy to have their code scrutinized and audited by third parties such as mozilla 
so you can be confident you're getting the very best level of privacy and security, certainly on par with any paid VPN service. The only thing that is missing from this service is that they don't offer an option of a browser extension. ProtonVPN is very easy to set up. Simply browse to protonvpn.com forward slash download and download the correct version for your computer. If you're following along on mobile, simply download the app from your app store. On PC, run through the normal install wizard and on Mac, drag your app to your applications folder. Open the application, confirm the security prompt and then you're prompted to log in. Now, if you've previously signed up to a ProtonMail account, then you can use the same credentials here. Otherwise, you'll need to click on Create Account. This will take you to the sign up page. Be sure to click the free account and fill in your details. You'll need to verify your details by way of a code, which you can get either through SMS or email. Having entered the code, you'll be logged into your account in the browser and you can now use those logon credentials to log into the app. Note that the app does require your username, not your email address, which took me a few goes to work out. You get the option to take a tour of the interface, which basically highlights some of the main features, such as the ability to create profiles, choose a connection, and enable the kill switch, which will disable your internet connection should the VPN get disconnected. Thanks to Mac's enhanced security features, Mac users, you have two additional steps after logging in. Firstly, you need to allow the application to run in system preferences, and when you first connect the VPN, you'll need to allow access to the VPN configuration service. Other than that, the interface is exactly the same. On mobile, having downloaded and opened the app, log in or sign up if you haven't already. You'll see this notification, which basically describes what information Proton VPN keeps on file about you, which is basically your username, email address, and the model of your phone, which is purely for error reporting. Once logged in, it's a very similar interface. You can click on the button next to any of the three countries to connect. And as with Mac OS, you'll need to allow the app access to the VPN service. The kill switch is located in settings, which you can access from the menu along the bottom here, and profiles is where you'll find the option to connect to the fastest server. Clicking on that will connect me to a server in Japan, and if I switch over to YouTube, I can now watch Japanese cartoons. How about that? So that is my recommendation for a free VPN. As I said, if you are a light user like me, then don't waste your money paying for a VPN service. I think you'll be very happy with Proton VPN. If you're interested in knowing my recommendation for a free password manager, then you might be interested in watching this. In my last video, I explained why I was making the switch from LastPass to Bitwarden and how to transfer across all your passwords over to Bitwarden. In this video, I'll go through creating your Bitwarden account and how to make it work across all your devices. So let's start at the very beginning by going to bitwarden.com and clicking on Get Started. Enter your email address, a name, and a master password. This password controls access to your Bitwarden account, but also all the passwords held in your vault. So make sure it's long, strong, and memorable. Hit submit and you'll be prompted to re-enter your account credentials once more to access your vault. If you're making the switch from using another password manager, or you previously saved your passwords in a browser, Bitwarden offers several options for importing your existing passwords by clicking on Tools and Import Data. I imported my last pass vault into Bitwarden, which as I say, I demonstrated in my previous video. The next step is to verify your email address by clicking Send Email, run through the normal process, click the link, and re-enter your account details. The easiest way to use Bitwarden on your computer is to add it as a browser extension. In Chrome, you can access your browser extensions either by clicking on the icon in the top right corner of the window, or if you don't see the icon, click on the ellipsis, choose More Tools and Extensions. Open the Chrome Web Store and search for Bitwarden. Click on Add to Chrome, 
followed by add extension. It's a similar process if you're using Edge or Firefox, but Safari users, you'll find your browser extensions in the Mac App Store. Once installed, I pin the icon and then I log in once more to complete the setup process. We can now access all of our passwords quickly and easily whilst browsing the internet. By default, Bitwarden will ask for the master password each time you open your browser, which will become very tedious. So I recommend creating a pin to use instead. Untick the box so, so that you can use the pin in all instances instead of your password. If you need to access your vault at any time, you can do so by scrolling down and selecting Bitwarden Web Vault. If you prefer, Bitwarden does offer a standalone app for both Windows and Mac, but it works in exactly the same way as the browser extension, which I find more convenient. To use Bitwarden on your mobile or tablet, download the app from the App Store and log in using your same credentials. Bitwarden syncs your account details using push notifications, so you will need to allow notifications. As with the browser extension, I recommend changing a few settings to make your life easier. Click on the settings icon from the menu and enable unlock with face ID, or you can use a pin if you have an older version of an iPhone or iPad. Click no to the prompt to use the pin rather than the password in all instances. You'll want to turn on password autofill, which allows access to Bitwarden through Safari and your other browser apps. To do this, go to the settings app, scroll down to passwords, choose autofill passwords, and then select Bitwarden from the list. Again, you're prompted to re-enter your master password and you should receive confirmation that autofill is now activated. I also recommend enabling the app extension, which is an alternative way of accessing Bitwarden by clicking on the share button or more button as demonstrated here. You can launch any of the sites you have stored within Bitwarden simply by clicking on the ellipsis and selecting launch. If everything is working correctly, you'll be asked to use credentials stored within Bitwarden. So that is my recommendations for a free VPN service and password manager. Visit the website for lots more information about these apps and others. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.